Honorable Wiener, do you have something to say? Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, on this matter, I've really seen uh, Honorable Didmas making a thorough presentation on the alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, which involves the inclusion of elders in conflict resolution, which I do agree with that it is a very viable idea because our court system is so congested. However, there's only one point. In totality, I agree with it that this bill should pass. The reservation that I have because you've now invoked my legal uh, knowledge is that uh, in jurisprudence, there are different schools of thought. There is the natural school of thought, which says that law emanates from the Almighty, from a deity, from the Almighty God, and that law should have morality. And should we have these elders, and at times you know, Moshimiwa Didmas, how the elders behave, when it comes to conflict resolution, they may be biased, they may take a political angle, they may come up with unjust laws. And from the natural school of thought, it states clearly that law should be just, that an unjust law is not law, as was opined by St. Augustine of Hippo in that natural school of thought, and also St. Thomas Aquinas were the two proponents of the natural school of thought. Then moving very fast, uh, Moshimiwa Didmas, we have also the positivist. I want to marry these two so that we know where the society will move to. The positivist, as a, as a school of thought, states that Moshimiwa Kidogo, the positivist school of thought states clearly that law should be written law. And that is what now, at times, we use in our constitution and also in the courts. And also the courts can make laws through the realism. That the positivist argued that a law should just be written. And that there need not to be morality as part of a law. That law can exist without morality. Then we remember during Hitler's time, during the Holocaust, when the Nazi Germans were killed, killing the Jew. During that period, it was correct. It was in written laws. The positivist, who is a Hart, HLA Hart professor, said clearly, just Moshimiwa, Moshimiwa, this point is very important and urgent because I don't want these elders to make wrong laws and just terminate people <laughs> unfairly. So please just hang on my lips. Thank you, Chairman. So HLA Hart, said that, you know, that there should be no relationship between law and morality. And therefore, he was supporting the idea that Hitler ought to have just killed the Jews because it was written laws. Then Professor Lon Fuller, not Professor, but Lon Fuller, during that debate of HLA Hart versus Lon Fuller, they were arguing. And Lon Fuller challenged Hart, chairman, he challenged Professor H.L.A. Art and said that, yes, it is written law that people ought to have been killed as per the German rules. But was it moral? Then that is, at that point, Hart changed his heart and said that, indeed, as much as it was written law, then the Jews ought not to have been killed. So what I'm trying to say is this. Most of these elders, you know, can be political. And you know me and you will be the first victims if we don't send them something because they can decide to make unfair laws or unjust laws. So my question is, which type of laws, as they resolve to alternative dispute resolution mechanism, will they be using? But the idea itself is a brilliant idea. Thank you. So Mr. Speaker, what I want to remind the people who are here, what China has done for the last, for the last maybe 50 or 70 years, I think Kenya, if given opportunity, with people, and, and to, yesterday I was reading something, Mr. Speaker, here. And the constitution of Kenya, if we cannot follow it in full and implement it fully, then we should disband it altogether. And for Kenya to be even more than China, 
for Kenya to be even more than Singapore, we must check the mental capacity of voters. Mr. Speaker. And the constitution is clear on that. You as a voter. You as a voter. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and, and I want to repeat for the record. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, just for the record. Uh, the article, and I'm reading it for the second time and this for the last time, Mr. Speaker. The registration as a voter in Kenya, that is Article 83 of the constitution. Article 83 one states, one a states that you must be an adult. For an evidence that you are an adult, you must hold an ID, identity card that you are a Kenyan. You must have a passport. And to get that passport, you must present your ID. That now means you are an adult. But the IBC, the Parliament of Kenya, and the government are failing to implement the constitution fully. What are they not uh, implementing? They are not now following the B part. It's not declared to be an sound mind. These people, you go to IBC booth, you want to register as a, as a, as a voter. The, 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 the fellow usually asks for you an ID, but they must ask for an evidence from a recognized doctor that you are normal. Mr. Speaker, for you to register as a, as, a, as, a, as a voter, because we need a normal people, because abnormal people, as sister, they are many. So they vote for no wrong leaders, and that's why they interfere and they are what they are suffering. So there are abnormal people here. Yeah. Some of them are looking at you. But Mr. Speaker, no, no, no. And so you are abnormal. So Mr. Speaker, I finalize. Order. Order. So Mr. Speaker, Mr. I've said some of them. If you are one of them, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I think uh, the Ma Madare Mental Hospital should be expanded and uh, a lot of uh, per, per county, two or three per county, so that most of these people should go and be checked, or not most, everyone, to go and be checked whether they are normal or abnormal, then you you are given a card that you have been satisfied that you are normal <laughs> and you are an adult. Now, unaenda kwa IBC, unasema sasa, I want to be a voter. So that we don't get a tyranny of numbers that are abnormal, Mr. Speaker. And, and Mr. Speaker, I'm finalizing this. Before even we blame William Ruto, before even we blame any individual in the government, we must check on the mental capacity of those who are putting them in power. Yes, yes, Mr. Speaker. Because I'm looking sometimes uh, during an electioneering period, you listen on how individual is reasoning on the question of economy or this public. But you are wondering, because there are many, and you don't want to tell them the truth that they are stupid, you just keep quiet, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, as Mungela Mwananchi and the people must come out, and this thing must be a, an act of parliament. That the first evidence that you should be a voter is that you are normal. And you just you cannot just tell me that you are normal, but you are telling me what you cannot be justifiable on the question of economy, on the question of freedom. And and Mr. Speaker, yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I'm finalizing before before those concerns and questions. Before those concerns. And, 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 <laughs> Mr. Speaker, some is using the constitution to justify unsoundness. Why can you use the same constitution to justify normality? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs>
Himself, Mr. Speaker, is using us, is, is, is trying to put it this way, Mr. Speaker. It is the concern that needs to be said who is normal and who is. Who is, who is, who is. There is a point and a letter. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, some is, some is reading the position selected. He's not in the presence of the way it's supposed to be. He, 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 he was to tell us, he was to tell us how to identify this person who is unsound and how also to, to look for the normality of this person. He cannot only just use the constitution, he's, he, on the other hand is supporting the normality, on the other hand is also rejecting a normality. So why are you actually directing us? Mm, what are you saying? He, 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 you are speaking in, in, two, in, in from both sides, Mr. Speaker. In one side, you are supporting normality. The, on the other side, he's also uh, talking about abnormality, Mr. Speaker. So he, he's speaking from both sides, me from your analysis. Sam is speaking from both sides. Oh, yes. He's not categorical. Thank you. Yes. Let me assist you, sir. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, order, order. order. Sure. Hey. Mr. Speaker. To some of you. Member of Parliament. I heard that uh, Member of Parliament is saying when uh, a voter have registered, uh, uh, someone has registered as a voter, the first thing we must do before election, we must, uh, we should take him or her to Madari for a checkup, for a mental check. But what I can tell uh, Member on the floor, during campaign period, we are looking for a candidate who is serving a convincing manifesto. When your manifestos are not convincing, even a normal person will not vote for you. <coughs> will not vote for you. So, yeah, we are following the manifesto. Man, we don't let, no, let me, order, let me order. tell you. Order. Order. Let me tell you. During campaign period, Ruto really Ruto really tell people big promises. True or false? Big promises. But the problem is action. Ruto is not acting. When Baba was campaigning, Baba told us we have six K for those who are so for normal Kenyans. True or false? True. So, those who followed manifesto of o. William Samuel Ruto, which were convincing to them, are the people who voted for the pre yes. president. If we leave, if we leave out, to do IBC wamefanya nini, IBC wamefanya nini, chebukate nini nini, I think that's the thing. That's also a question. Yeah, 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 no, 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 question. No, no, question. Okay, okay member, okay. this is the end of this nonsense. So, let's go to our other matter. <laughs> Number one. I'm the new speaker. I'm the new speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new speaker. I'm the new speaker. I'm the new speaker. I'm the new speaker. I'm the new speaker.